Hey guys, James with TFB TV. You don't give a shit about long range shooting and I don't do a lot of it, but you guys did see my coverage from Thunder Ranch. I did the counter sniper course for like a week out there and I needed to find a decent optic to use out there at the course. So we had spoke to this company, Maven, about reviewing one of their optics in the past. We reached out to them again and they were more than glad to send me the Maven RS4 to use during the course. When companies let me demo a product, it's usually because they want me to review it. So today you're getting my honest review of the Maven RS4 optic. Before we get into my personal opinion, let's talk about the specs. The Maven RS4 is Maven's top end first focal plane Japanese made optic and it comes in MOA or mill based adjustment. The magnification starts at 5x and works its way all the way up to a whopping 30x and it's parallax adjustable through that range. It also has a very large 56 millimeter objective lens diameter. This thing is freaking huge. The RS4 has an overall length of 12.8 inches. At 35.4 ounces it's a little husky. Some would say overweight. Many of you regular viewers of TFB TV might like it because it may remind you of your mother's. It operates in a negative 4 to 158 degree functional temperature range. It's waterproof to 3 meters and nitrogen purged. There are four reticle options from Maven. There are a couple of weird things about Maven that I wanted to mention right now. First of all, it has a lifetime warranty that allegedly covers accidental damage. If that's true, that's pretty interesting. They also operate on a direct to consumer basis. That is no middleman. They don't sell to retailers. If you want one of these optics, you buy it from Maven. They say that helps keep costs down. I say it helps keep profits up. But the point is, if you want one of these, you're buying it directly from Maven and there's no MSRP. It's going to be a fixed 1800 bucks, which is not cheap, but we'll talk about that more during the review. There are also several personalization options, including color accents and engraving. So you can kind of mix up some of the colors on rings, bezels, so on with the customizer that they have on their website. Now I'm going to talk about my personal experience with the Maven. I brought two guns out to Thunder Ranch for the counter sniper course. For bolt action, I used the brand new Springfield Waypoint. Loved it. It had a Leopold or Leopold or Leopold or whatever in the fuck that thing is called <laughs> optic. Like I said, guys, I don't get out of the house much for shooting precision rifle, but it had that glass on it and I really enjoyed it. I had a Springfield M1A loaded that carried the Maven. The M1A decided that it wanted to live free. And so it bucked its rider, that is the Maven RS4, by virtue of stripping the screw that mounted the scope mount to the receiver. Up until that point, it was working pretty well. And in fact, I even let Taryn Butler shoot it. Taryn was out there. If you guys don't know Taryn, he's uh, one of the, the best tournament shooters probably in the world. And Taryn made a comment. I hope I have it on camera so I can just pop it in the video right here. But he made a comment on camera, off camera, something like, wow, that is a really good scope. You guys got the Franzi at the house? I'm down for the house. labor. I'm for All right, the scope is bitching. You like it? Very nice. I'm reviewing also, that too. It's brand new. I've never even heard of them. Whose is it? Maven. I've never even heard of them. They sent it to me to try out. When the M1A was accommodating an optic, I shot very well with the Maven, and in fact, very well with the M1A loaded until this thing started shaking loose. So after I get back from Thunder Ranch, I wanted to put a few hundred more rounds through the Maven RS4 before I actually did a review on it. So I slapped it here on my BCM. This is just a, a standard BCM mid-length AR-15. So nothing super exotic. I took it out, shot it at 100 yards, was shooting one and a half, two MOA all day with this thing. Let's go ahead and talk about that price on the front end. Maven kind of pitches the RS4 as like an affordable version of more Gucci optics. Like think about like your Night Force or your Schmidt and Bender or whatever. And you know, an S and B optic uh, with a comparable magnification range and objective. Like I think a five to 25, this is a five to 30, but a five to 25 S and B with a 56 millimeter objective will probably run you three to $4,000 instead of $1,800. So the Maven is half as expensive. I don't have a ton of trigger time, 
behind German glass, but I still have quite a bit of experience with mini rifle optics as well as binoculars and photo lenses. Japanese glass is very good. The Maven RS4 is no exception. It's extremely clear. I'm going to pipe in in a second some video that I took through the lens on my camera a little bit earlier this afternoon. But I'm not going to hold myself out there to say that I could even arguably compare it to, say, like top end German glass. 5X, focus set to infinity. 6X. Ten X, twelve X. There we go. Twenty X now focused. Twenty five X. Try to adjust the focus a little bit. It's twenty five X. All the way up to thirty X. Now let's try to get that focused. Yeah, that's at 30X. I would say that that's still pretty sharp. Not bad at all. I'm not gonna say that this isn't as good as some of the like super premium optics out there. I would be very surprised if it were. I just don't have enough experience behind that type of super high-end glass in the precision rifle setting to opine intelligently about it. But based on my prior experience with other scopes, with binoculars, with lenses, Japanese glass tends to be very good. The 5X to 30X magnification is pretty damn impressive on the RS4. You can magnify up to 30 times with this thing. That tends to lend itself to greater accuracy. Of course, if you can see something better, you can shoot that something better. But there are some trade-offs, which I'll get to whenever we get to the negatives. You have positive clicking for windage and elevation. It works very well, but the turrets don't lock. You can reset them for zero, but if you accidentally knock this thing, you're kind of hosed. The zoom ring is pretty heavily tensioned, but it's not that hard to adjust with using just your thumb and forefinger. And I kind of like it that way. Wow, phrasing. I mean, it's smooth and it works and you're not going to accidentally go from like 10X to 25X without even knowing about it. I love the reticle illumination on this optic, the reticle I was using. I loved it, I used it at Thunder Ranch, I left the damn thing on, and this was like months ago, so it died. I don't know if I left the reticle illuminator on in between when I was at Thunder Ranch a couple of months ago and now, because it's totally off. And while this thing is amazing with the reticle illuminator on, and you can select green or red, with it off, all you have is a very, very tiny dot as like your crosshair and it's black. It's a, and I'm not discriminating against black reticles, but it's really hard to see if you're shooting at a dark target as we are right now, shooting at black shoot and see. So this is gonna take, it isn't like guesswork. It just, it's gonna take more work than there needs to be. I don't know what the battery life is. I couldn't find battery life specs on the illumination, but the illumination died, so I didn't get to use it whenever I brought it out to the ranch here in Louisiana. Now, believe it or not, even though I'm on YouTube, um, I don't know everything. So if I'm handling a product or an accessory that I don't have a ton of trigger time on, this isn't a concealable handgun, this isn't an AR-15 or an AK-47 or a red dot or a micro red dot, or a holster, so it's not something that, that I spend a lot of time obsessing over. In that case, what I usually do is I'll reach out to, like for Precision Rifle, I like talking with Joel at Precision Rifle Network, or I'll go online, I'll go check forums, I'll see what, uh, even Amazon reviews are helpful sometimes if you can find information, but I go out there and I do the research just like you would, and I present it to you. And what I can tell you, the reviews that I read all point to the Maven RS4 as being a good to great optic, especially when you factor in the price, considering that this costs half as much as some of its European competitors, but it delivers a wide objective, great light gathering, great clarity, and several other features it seemed to be a relatively good deal. And even me, somebody who doesn't mind splurging on a few gun items, even me, when I hear somebody say $1,800 for an optic is a good deal, I'm like, oh my God, you are drunk. But what I'm trying to say is not only did I actually have a great time with this optic, but I wanted to make sure 
that I was indeed having a good time and I couldn't have been having a better time with something else. So I go and I do the research and I find out that people generally have favorable impressions of the RS4 and I didn't really see any negative reviews. But speaking of negatives, I always like to bring you guys at least a couple of negative things that I noticed with any product I review. And there were a couple of things with the RS4. As I mentioned previously, I don't know what the battery life is for the illumination and this son of a bitch died sometime in the past couple of months, but that's my fault for leaving it on, I guess. I just don't understand why you can have like micro red dot optics that can last for like four or five, 20 years, and you can't have just like a little illuminator in a monster effing scope that'll last for more than a few months of constant on. Again, it is heavy as piss. We're talking like 36 ounces. This thing's a hog. You're not gonna go backpacking with this thing. You're not gonna go out in the back country with this thing. You're gonna be shooting stuff from your deer stand, or I think this is more geared towards competitive shooters. And I think that if you're trying to break into the competitive arena, this might in fact be a great option at $1,800 if you need that level of magnification, but you wanna save some money and not shell out like three or four grand for a mega super high-end optic. And because you're working with this whopping 56 millimeter objective and this 34 millimeter tube, you're also going to need special scope mounts and rings in order to make this work. But as you can see with this worn mount, or is it Vorn or Varney? I don't know. But with this mount that I got and I used, uh, on the BCM, I can just mount it on a standard AR-15 and it works. There are a couple of drawbacks that I mentioned on the range, and that is because of the magnification level that you're talking about in this massive objective. There are minor drawbacks. There are consequences that are more or less associated with the, having that wide range of magnification all the way up to 30x. First of all, even though the eye relief is actually really good, and that's something that pisses me off, that's how forgiving the optic is moving your eye forward or backwards. The eye relief is pretty good on this. The eye box, on the other hand, that side to side, is not really that good, especially at 30X, it's virtually unusable. So it's kind of got a tight eye box. I'm gonna show you guys how unforgiving these optics can be, not just Maven, but any high power optic can be once you get it zoomed all the way out to 30x. I want you to know how much of a pain in the ass it is first for me to align this camera so it looks into the scope. But look, I'm moving it about, I haven't even moved it an eighth of an inch to the right, the camera. That's to the right and to the left, total blackout. See that? I mean, when you get it on, like right on the spot, that is actually a really sharp image. But now let's back it all the way out to 10x. You still can't move it too much, but moving the camera to the right and to the left a little bit more. Now look how much motion I get when I have it down to 7x. A lot of movement, see that? A lot of lateral movement. Watch this. So at 7x, you get this much more lateral movement. Look at that. Got it, 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 fading, fading, fading. Now, let's take it back up to 30. And look at that, just barely, barely moving and it's totally gone. Not that that really says anything about the quality of the Maven, just generally speaking, whenever you get into super high powered optics like this, they become pretty finicky once you get them stretched all the way out. But it still works and once you get it down to 25x, 26x, it's absolutely manageable and it gets more manageable the further down you go. I put it at uh, 30x. I don't want to say utterly unusable. I just said it, but I don't want to say it's utterly unusable. It's just so unforgiving at 30x that you almost can't use it. Now, that isn't necessarily a huge problem, right? Because if they called this a 24X optic, or if they made this a 24X optic, then the 24X being the top end of magnification for that optic, if you say did 5 to 24, 5 to 25, that would be unusable. Here, 25 is usable. I'm going to dial it into 25 now. Again, it's a little bit, it's certainly less forgiving than if you dropped it down to like 12 or 15. But 25 is usable. And even though this is advertised as a five to 30X, I'm not sure I would ever use it at 30, but if it weren't a 30X, 
then 25X wouldn't be as forgiving as it is, if that makes sense to you guys. Also, something you see with any optic of this size with this magnification, you are going to have some vignetting around the edges. You're going to have like some softer edges, and you may be able to see them in these videos that I took. But it, it's really not that bad, and it's not going to be noticeable to most shooters. But all in all, I concur with the positive reviews that I read whenever I was researching this optic. I'm really glad that Maven let me borrow this at the Thunder Ranch Counter Sniper course. I was very impressed with it, and I think that this is a pretty damn good piece of glass. If right now I'm saying to you, hey, this thing costs $1,800, and you're like, oh my god, that is a ton of money, you probably don't want to buy this. If you're, on the other hand, saying, oh, it's only $1,800 and it's 5X to 30X, that's going to be great for like my competition shooting or whatever the case may be, then in that instance, it's a deal for you. So really, it's all about your frame of reference. Some people are going to see this and say, holy crap, that's expensive. But you're not going to be using this with Junior in the deer stand, most of you. You're going to be using your 3 to 9X from Leopold, Leopold whatever. On the other hand, there are going to be some precision rifle shooters who are going to be really glad to hear that they can use serviceable glass that will work up to 30x, of course. Refer back to my other comments. Would I buy it? Shit, no. Absolutely not. But I never shoot at anything further than 100 yards because I live in the swamp. If I were maybe someone out west, if I were a precision rifle shooter, uh, if I were somebody who really just wanted to reach out and touch something with my rifle, then absolutely I would give this a hard look. Maven at least used to, they may still be doing it, but they had a no strings attached, like two week demo program where they would send you a demo scope and you can send it back to them, you can try it out, and I highly recommend that. Again, if this sounds good to you on paper, I'd check it out speaking of check it out. I would also check out our sponsors, Ventura Munitions, as well as Blue Alpha. They make some of the best belts in the business. And then my most favorite online shooting sports superstore, Top Gun Supply. We appreciate the support from all of them. We appreciate support from you. You guys on Patreon and Subscribestar keep us independent. And of course, just for watching. Have a great week. Take care.